Okay, let's spend a little bit of time talking about which law applies. In other words, answering what is referred to as a choice of law question that arises after a court has established that it has jurisdiction to deal with a cross-border matter. Uh, now, for the sake of just making it easy, let's think about this in the context of a dispute, a commercial dispute uh, that involves parties who are um, not in the same state or nation um, and relates to a matter where uh, the activities have happened in more than one nation or more than one state. Um, usually the question, the choice of law question, is between the law of one forum and the law of another. So forum here is really another word for jurisdiction. Um, we're talking about the fora, the place in which the matter will be heard. So the forum refers to the court or the place. So which court and which laws will apply? And sometimes it can be between one or another jurisdiction. Sometimes it can be between the laws of two completely external jurisdictions to the place in which the matter is being heard. So in Australia, we have a set of choice of law rules for disputes of each particular type. So for example, in matters of tort, so they're matters that involve civil wrongs, the High Court has held that the choice of law turns on where the tort occurred. So the Latin for this is lex locus de delicti. Lex locus delicti. Um, I hate it when people pull, pull me up on my Latin pronunciation. It's a dead language. We don't know how the ancient Romans said these words, um, but certainly they probably didn't say them the way I did. So lex is law, uh, locus is place, and delicti is uh, effectively about where the event happened. Um, in contractual disputes, on the other hand, um, an Australian court will look to whether or not the contract, it, it, the parties have expressed what law they wish to have apply. So it will often be that contracts will include a choice of law clause that states which rules will apply to the adjudication of any disputes. And on the whole, unless there is a really good countervailing reason for not doing so, an Australian court will uh, basically take notice of what it is that the parties have said they will agree. So if a contract says that the dispute will be resolved in accordance with the laws of Singapore, even if it's brought an, into an Australian court and the Australian court has determined that it has jurisdiction to hear the matter, it will do its best to apply the laws of Singapore to that dispute. Um, so the other choice or the other question here is not just which law but which forum? So even if the court determines that the laws of the forum are applicable, the doctrine of forum non-convenience can mean that the court will decline to exercise jurisdiction on the basis that it is not the most appropriate forum anyway. So forum non-convenience is essentially a doctrine about the convenience of the um, the forum that the parties have chosen. So if, for example, there is a contract between someone in Australia, someone in New Zealand that relates to a building work in China, um, it may well be that the parties have elected the uh, selected the laws of China. Um, and in that case, it actually makes sense. There's a connection to the place. Um, the two parties are in different states. They've chosen the particular law that relates to where the asset is. Um, however, if instead what they had done, Australia and New Zealand, the project is in China and they've picked the laws of New York, um, there is no real connection between the laws of New York and that particular project. Um, and it may be very inconvenient and time consuming for the parties to try and get into the New York courts.
So the High Court in Australia has held that the standard needs to be applied, uh, that it applies, is whether or not the forum is appropriate. And it needs to be clearly inappropriate um, before the words or the decisions of the party will be overturned. Uh, so the clearly inappropriate forum test involves looking at all of the factors, including whether there are significant connections between the forum and the subject matter of the proceedings. So my first example, China might be a long way away, but it was connected to the proceedings or to the type of contract that was under dispute. Um, whether the chosen forum provides a legitimate advantage to a plaintiff uh, and whether alter alternative forums are available. The last thing that is really relevant when we're talking about uh, choice of law matters or considering which law applies is the question of when a foreign judgment will be enforced. And now Cormier has some information about this that I think is more than enough for our purposes this week. Um, under public international law, a state has power to, or a state's power to enforce a law or a judgment can only be exercised within its borders, its territorial jurisdiction. Um, so this actually also applies when there's cross-border private litigation. So the extraterritorial enforcement of judges can only be managed via transnational co cooperation and mutual consent. In other words, even if you have successfully sued um, a party in relation to your building project in China, if you successfully sued them in Australia, you've received a judgment that says that they have to pay you some money, um, going and trying to enforce that judgment in, I think I said the other uh, party was in New Zealand, um, to go to New Zealand and collect the cash requires effectively New Zealand to recognise the efficacy of that court order. Um, and as mentioned just a moment ago, largely this is done through international treaties. Um, what else do I want to say here? Um, one of the ways that we do this in Australia is through a piece of legislation known as the Foreign Judgments Act 1991 Commonwealth. Um, that legislation allows for reciprocal recognition and enforcement of a range of types of foreign judgments from certain foreign courts. So if, if, a, if we have uh, an arrangement in place with New Zealand where effectively we've said we'll recognise your court order if you recognise ours, and given the nature of the Australian-New Zealand relationship, it is highly likely that that is the case, um, there's no need to go in and establish or retry the matter again in the courts of New Zealand uh, later on. Um, generally, foreign judgments won't be enforceable on grounds of fraud, denial of natural justice or public policy unless that reciprocal recognition is in place. So all of this technical stuff becomes one layer more complicated when we go and think about it again in terms of the kinds of trade and commerce that people do over the internet and in a borderless context. Uh, so in the next video, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a primer on private and public inter international law and the differences between them. Uh, but from, uh, yeah, and then we'll look at a couple of cases and we'll be done for the week. Uh, as always, questions, concerns, compliments, frustrations, you know where to find.